Oh, oh. oh, I'm really sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine, but I'm not very good at this. Neither am I. Hey, I like your shirt. Are you from Argentina? Yes, I am originally. I was born there. Did you grow up there? Yes, I did, but my family moved here 10 years ago, when I was in middle school. And where did you learn to skate? Here in the park. This is only my third time. Well, it's my first time. Can you give me some lessons? Sure. Just follow me. By the way, my name is Ted. And I'm Anna. Hey, that was fun. Thanks for the lesson. No problem. So, tell me a little about yourself. What do you do? I work in a travel agency. Really? What do you do there? I'm in charge of their computers. Oh, so you're a computer specialist? Well, sort of. Yeah, I guess so. That's great. Then maybe you can give me some help with the computer course I'm taking. Oh, sure. But only if you promise to give me some more skating lessons. It's a deal. Listening. Life as an immigrant. Listen to interviews with two immigrants to the United States. Where are they from? Hui. Where are you from originally, Hui? I'm from Vietnam, from near Hanoi. And when did you move here? I came here after I graduated from college. That was in 1998. And what do you do now? I work for a communications company. I see. So you're an immigrant to the United States. That's right. What are some of the difficulties of being an immigrant in the U.S.? Oh, that's not an easy question to answer. There are so many things, really. I guess one of the biggest difficulties is that I don't have any relatives here. I mean, I have a lot of friends, but that's not the same thing. In Vietnam, we visit relatives on holidays and weekends. It's not the same here. And what do you miss the most from home? Oh, that's easy. My mom's cooking. There are some great Vietnamese restaurants here, but it's not the same as my mother's cooking. Ahmed. Where are you from, Ahmed? I'm from Egypt. And when did you move to the U.S.? In 2005. Are you studying here at the moment? Not now. I moved here to attend college. And after I graduated, I got a job here. I'm working as an engineer. Uh-huh. And what was it like when you first came here? Was it difficult? Yeah, it was at times. The biggest difficulty I had was with the educational system. Things are very different here. Teaching methods. Everything is very different from what I was used to in Egypt. And what do you miss the most from Egypt? My family and my friends. I try to go home often, but it's expensive to go back. I have some friends coming to visit next month, so I'm really looking forward to that. Perspectives. How have you changed? Listen to these statements about changes. One. When I was a kid, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat. Two. I didn't used to collect anything, but now I do. Three. I never used to play sports, but now I like to keep fit. Four. I never used to worry about money, but I do now. Five. I used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I don't have any free time. Six. I didn't used to follow politics, but now I check headlines online every day. Seven. When I was younger, I used to care a lot about my appearance. Now, I'm too busy to care how I look. Perspectives. Transportation services. Listen to these comments about transportation services. The buses are old and slow, and they cause too much pollution. In cities with less pollution, people are healthier. There are too many cars. 
All the cars, taxis, and buses are a danger to bicyclists. There is too much traffic. There should be fewer cars, but I think that the biggest problem is parking. There just isn't enough parking. Singapore has done a lot to try to solve its traffic problems. For example, to drive into the downtown business district, motorists need to buy a special pass. They can go into the business district only if they have the pass on their windshield. Another thing Singapore has done is to make it more difficult to buy cars. People have to apply for a certificate before they can buy a car. Not everyone can get a certificate. There's a limited number of them. There's also a high tax on cars, so a new one costs a lot of money. Singapore, then in the U.S. or Canada. The other thing Singapore has done is build an excellent public transportation system. Their subway system is one of the best in the world. And there's also a very good taxi and bus system. Conversation. Could you tell me... Listen and practice. Excuse me. Could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or so. And just one more thing. Do you know where the restrooms are? Right behind you. Do you see where that sign is? Oh, thanks a lot. Listen to the rest of the conversation. Check the information that Eric asks for. Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Listening. Celebrity interview. Listen to an interview with Jerry, a fashion model. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England, in a city called Brighton. How do you spell that? B-R-I-G-H-T-O-N. Just like it sounds? Yes. What was that like? Brilliant. It's a lovely city, right by the sea. My family still lives there. My father owns a restaurant and my mother teaches school. What did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I never thought I'd be a model. I wanted to be a doctor or maybe a writer. Why not a model? Well, I always thought I looked funny. I can't imagine it. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint, and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit, but it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. Perspectives. Which would you prefer? 
Listen to these opinions about houses and apartments. Which ones are about space? 1. Apartments are too small for pets. 2. Apartments aren't big enough for families. 3. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. 4. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. 5. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. 6. Houses cost too much money. 7. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. 8. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. 9. Houses don't have enough closet space. 10. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Listening. Capsule Hotels. Listen to Brad describe a capsule hotel. Welcome to the program, Your Home is My Home. Our guest tonight is Brad Phillips from California. Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm working as an English teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is an exciting city, but it's also very spread out. It can sometimes take hours to go from one part of the city to another. When I don't feel like going all the way home, I sometimes stay in a capsule hotel. A capsule hotel? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a hotel with lots of small rooms. Actually, they're not really rooms. They're spaces that are two meters by one meter and only a meter high. In other words, they're very cramped. But the hotel is cheap and very convenient. And what's inside each little room, or should I say each space? Well, inside every capsule, there's a bed, a TV. A TV? Really? Yeah, and a reading light, a radio, and an alarm clock. The hotel also has lockers where you can keep your personal belongings. Interesting. So what kind of people stay in a capsule hotel? Well, probably people like me. People who miss the last train home or don't want to go all the way home only to turn around and come back to work again. It gets pretty busy, as you can imagine. Finally, would you recommend a capsule hotel to other people? Sure. The rooms are small, but you get used to sleeping in a small space. I just wouldn't recommend a capsule hotel to people who can't relax in small, cramped spaces. Conversation. Making changes. Listen and practice. So, are you still living with your parents, Terry? I'm afraid so. I wish I had my own apartment. Why? Don't you like living at home? It's okay, but my parents are always asking me to be home before midnight. I wish they'd stop worrying about me. Yeah, parents are like that. And they expect me to help around the house. I hate housework. I wish life weren't so difficult. So, why don't you move out? Hey, I wish I could. But where else can I get free room and board? Listen to the rest of the conversation. What changes would Brian like to make in his life? Yeah, it's sometimes pretty hard to pay the rent. I'm thinking of finding a new job. Really? What kind of job would you like? I'm not sure but I wish I worked somewhere else. I'm tired of this place. I need to live somewhere more exciting. I know what you mean. Hey, maybe we could move to a different city. We could even be roommates. Yeah, uh, maybe. Conversation. Have you ever... Listen and practice.
Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Listen to the rest of the conversation. How did Steve like the fried brains? What else did he order? Oh, good. Here comes our server now. Here are your snails. And for you, sir, the fried brains. Thank you. Mmm, these snails are delicious. How are the brains? Well, I think they're... Yuck. Oh, sorry. I guess brains are too strange for me. Um, I think I'm going to order something else, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Excuse me. Yes? Um, I really don't care for this appetizer. Could you bring me something else? Yes, of course. What would you like instead? Try the snails. No, I don't think so. I'll tell you what. Just forget an appetizer for me and bring me a nice, juicy hamburger with french fries and a large soda. Listening. I really need a change. Listen to three people talk about things they wish they could change. One. I get really bored on weekends. I wish I belonged to a club or a sports team. I'd get to meet new people and make new friends. And I'd get into better shape, too. Two. I wish I could type better. I should take a typing course this summer. I really need it for my schoolwork. And people say that if you can type really well, it's something you'll find useful later in life. Three. I've been so stressed out lately. I really need to get away. I wish I could take a short trip to a beach just for a few days. No computer, no cell phone, no TV even. I'd just take a good book and relax. Conversation. What are you going to do? Listen and practice. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. Listen to the rest of the conversation. Where are they going to stay? How will they get there? By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Perspectives. Travel advice. Listen to these pieces of advice from experienced travelers. What topic is each person talking about? You should tell the driver where you're going before you get on. And you have to have exact change for the fare. When you fly, you should keep important things in your carry-on bag, such as your medication and credit cards. You shouldn't pack them in your checked luggage.
You should try some of the local specialties, but you'd better avoid the stalls on the street. In most countries, you don't have to have an international driver's license, but you must have a license from your own country. You also need to be 21 or over. You ought to pack a first aid kit and any medication you need. You shouldn't drink water from the tap. You ought to keep a copy of your credit card numbers at the hotel, and you shouldn't carry a lot of cash when you go out. Listening. Tourist tips. Listen to an interview with a spokeswoman from the New York City Visitor Center. What should people do to make their visit to New York City safe and pleasant? Don't try to do too much in a short time. That's very important. You should start planning before you get here. You ought to decide in advance which sites you most want to see. Are there any good tours available? Oh, yes, there are many. Some companies offer bus tours that stop at all the major tourist attractions. You can buy a pass so you can get on and off wherever you like. That saves you time. And you should visit our website to find out about the latest tours and special events. I see. And is New York a safe city for visitors? It's safer than many cities in the world. But just like in any big city, you should still be careful. For example, don't go off on your own, especially at night, and never carry much cash on you. Oh, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Even American visitors have to ask for help when they come here. You'll find that New Yorkers are pretty friendly. They like welcoming visitors to their city and are happy to give directions. One last thing. Is it an expensive city to visit? It can be, but there are a lot of places in the city where you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you're a student, you should bring your student ID card with you. That way, you can get a discount at museums and galleries. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, just that most people have a great time when they come to New York, and I'm sure you will too. Conversation. Turn down the TV. Listen and practice. Jason. Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. OK, I'll turn it down. That's better. Thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom. I'm on the phone. All right, but do it as soon as you hang up. OK, no problem. Were we like this when we were kids? <laughs> Definitely. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What complaints do Jason and Lisa have about their parents? Have you noticed how forgetful Dad is getting? He's always forgetting where his car keys are. It drives me crazy. And he can never find his glasses either. I know. You know what drives me crazy about Mom? What? The awful clothes she wears. Her style is so old-fashioned. It's embarrassing. Yeah, she could use some fashion advice. She should go shopping with you. Oh, well. I guess they're just getting old. I hope I never get like that. Me too. Hey, come on. Let's go play that new game online. Great idea. By the way, have you seen my glasses anywhere? Listening. Family life. Listen to the results of a survey about family life. According to the survey, what specific chores do men, women, boys, and girls usually do? Welcome to this week's program, Do Men Have It Easy?, where we'll take a look at the roles and responsibilities of men and women in families. First, thanks to all of you who responded to our survey. John? Thanks, Jennifer. 
Later on in the program, we'll be taking your phone calls and talking to Dr. Walters, a family psychologist, who will answer your questions. And now for the results of the survey. Jennifer? Well, in response to the first question, who is the messiest person in the house, the answer was boys. 92% of you said that your sons or brothers don't help much around the house. They don't pick up their things, don't hang up their clothes, and leave their clothes lying around. Interesting. And what about the second question, Jennifer? That was, who does most of the work in the kitchen? Well, 84% of you answered women. Many of you also explained that the boys and men usually take out the garbage. The girls and women tend to cook, do the dishes, and clean up. And what about the groceries, Jennifer? Well, according to our results, boys and girls usually put the groceries away. That's surprising. So what else do the women do? Ah, well, that's our next question. Who worries most about expenses? In the majority of homes, it seems that women worry most about household expenses. One young man wrote to us saying, my mother always nags me and my sister. She tells us to get off the phone, to stop spending so long on the computer, to turn off the TV. Well, everything, really. I always thought she just liked to nag, but maybe she's really worried about money. I think that's probably true, don't you, John? Yes, very interesting. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Walters. Perspectives Reasonable requests? Are all the requests reasonable? 1. Could you please tell me the next time you have a party? I'd like to make sure I'm not at home. 2. Can you turn the music down, please? The walls are really thin, so the sound goes through to my apartment. 3. Would you mind closing the door behind you and making sure it locks? We don't want strangers to enter the building. 4. Would you please tell your guests to use the visitor parking spaces? A lot of cars have been using my space recently. 5. Would you mind not putting your garbage in the hallway? It's not very pleasant to see when I walk by. 1. Judy. So, what are you planning to do on your vacation, Judy? Oh, I'm going to do something different this year. I went to Hawaii last year and just relaxed on the beach for two weeks. This year, I'm going whitewater rafting. Ooh, that sounds fun. But what is that exactly? Oh, well, they have these trips down the rapids. The water gets really rough, but I think it'll be really exciting. Oh, I'm doing some mountain climbing, too. And you call that a vacation? 2. Paul What are your plans for this summer, Paul? Oh, I'd love to go and lie on a beach somewhere, but I need to save some money for school. I think I'll stay home and get a job. That doesn't sound like much fun. Oh, it won't be so bad. Some of my friends are going to work this summer, too, so we'll have a good time on the weekends. 3. Brenda Have you planned anything for the summer, Brenda? Yeah. I'm going to work the first month and save some money. Then I'm going to Mexico to visit my sister. She's working in Guadalajara. She says it's really interesting there, so I want to see what it's like. I'm really looking forward to it. Listening. Offline. And proud of it. Listen to a radio program about the Internet. We've all heard stories about how Internet use is growing. Today, however, we're talking with someone who has studied people who don't use the Internet. Let's welcome Dr. Tom Van Cleve to the program. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thanks for coming. Now, I understand that many people still don't use the Internet, is that right? What can you tell us? That's right. My research has revealed that in the United States, for example, about 22% of the population never uses the Internet. And why is that? 
Well, they tend to be older people or people living in more rural areas, but there are also those who worry about privacy or who think that the Internet isn't necessary in their lives. Some of these people are even proud to be independent from the online world. Interesting. In your new book, you mention net evaders. Can you explain what you mean by this? Well, lots of people live with someone who browses websites, but they still don't log on themselves. I call this group net evaders. I found that these people may ask a family member to send emails for them, for example, but they don't want to do it themselves. I know someone like that. <laughs> yes, and then there's another group of people I call Internet dropouts. Internet dropouts? What exactly does that mean? It refers to people who once used the Internet, but have stopped using it for some reason. They may not have a computer anymore, may not have enough time, or simply may not be interested. I see. Well, thanks very much for sharing that information with us, Dr. Van Cleve. Conversation. I give up. Listen and practice. I give up. I can't figure this out. What's wrong? I'm trying to create a song playlist for my party on Saturday. I can help. It's really easy. First, choose new playlist from the menu. Here? Oh, I see. Now type in the name of your playlist. Then go to your song file and choose the ones you want. But how do I choose the songs? Just drag them to the playlist. Be sure to press these keys to highlight more than one song. That was easy. Thanks. So are you coming on Saturday? Of course. But don't forget to include my favorite songs on your playlist, okay? Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else does Terry want help with? Say, before you go, can you help me with something else? Sure, but I only have a minute. Okay, quickly. I'd like to edit a video I took. It's too long, and I want to post it online for my friends to see. Well, I know you need to open your editing program first. Okay. And then... Sorry, I'm not sure. Try to get the answers from the help box. That's what I always do. Perspectives. Special days. Listen to these comments about special days of the year. My favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. It's a day when North Americans celebrate the harvest. My whole family gets together at our house. I always cook a large turkey. February 14th is the day when people give cards and presents to the ones they love. I'm really looking forward to Valentine's Day. I already have a gift for my boyfriend. New Year's Eve is a night when I have fun with my friends. We usually have a big party. We stay up all night and then go out for breakfast in the morning. Listening. Carnival time. Mike has just returned from Brazil. Listen to him talk about Carnival. What was his favorite thing about it? Isn't this music fantastic? It's from a samba CD that I got when I was in Brazil for Carnival. Carnival is a big party or celebration and usually lasts for four days. It's in late February or early March, but you need to book a hotel room early because hotels fill up really quickly. People celebrate Carnival all over Brazil, but the most famous party is in Rio de Janeiro. There are colorful decorations all over the city. It's really beautiful, and everyone is very friendly, especially to visitors from other countries. My favorite thing about Carnival is the big parade. The costumes are amazing. People work on them for months. It's really fantastic to watch. Everyone dances the samba in the streets. I'd really recommend you try to go to Rio for Carnival. Conversation. Wedding day. 
Listen and practice. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures are from right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So, what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner, and after the meal, the guests give speeches or sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes, and the guests give money to the bride and groom. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What did the bride and groom give each guest? I'm curious. What did you and your husband give everyone? Well, sugar is a symbol of happiness in Japan. So we gave each guest a box filled with sweets. What a nice custom. It sounds like it was a wonderful day. Oh, it really was. Listening. Marriage customs. Listen to some information about marriage customs. 1. You know, this book about marriage customs is really interesting. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Listen to this. It talks about this native tribe in Paraguay. Uh-huh. When two women in the tribe want to marry the same man, guess what they do? I have no idea. What? They have a boxing match and fight until one of them wins. And the prize is the husband? Of course. Two. Hmm. Does the book say anything about Malaysia? Uh, I don't know. Why? Well, when people get married in Malaysia, they have to eat rice during the ceremony. Yeah? What's so strange about that? It's uncooked rice. Hmm. Three. Oh, here's another one. Don't laugh, but I think this is really romantic. You think something is romantic? <laughs> what is it? In Italy, a friend or family member often brings a pair of white doves to the wedding. After the ceremony, the cage is opened and the doves fly into the air. The birds symbolize the couple's love and happiness. You're right. That is romantic. Four. And here's an interesting custom from India. Let's hear it. There's a special Hindu water-pouring ceremony during the wedding. And what happens? Well, when the Indian bride and groom are married, someone pours water all over both of them. Why do they do that? Uh, it says here that it brings the couple closer together. Interesting. Conversation. That's progress. Listen and practice. This neighborhood sure has changed. I know. A few years ago, not many people lived here. But the population is growing so fast these days. Remember how we used to rent videotapes at that little video store? Yeah. Now it's a multiplex cinema. And I hear they're tearing down our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. Fifty years ago, people walked everywhere. What about that old bookstore? Do you know if it's still there? No, it's not. Now it's a hair salon. Really? What about the Thai restaurant next to it? I loved that place. Oh, that's still there. Let's go there this weekend. I'll drive. I can pick you up. Great. Listening. For better or for worse. Listen to people discuss changes. 1. How long have you been living here? Oh, for over 20 years. And have you noticed a lot of changes during that time? Oh, yes, quite a few. This is a much nicer place to live now than it used to be. It's much greener. When I first moved here, there weren't many trees around. But over the last few years, the city has planted trees everywhere. It's made such a difference. 2. 
How do you like living here? Well, it's an interesting city, but you really need a car here. You can't go anywhere without one. There used to be a good bus system, but there isn't anymore. Why is that? Oh, I think they expect everyone to have a car, so they don't bother to provide decent bus service. It's getting worse and worse. These days, you have to wait a long time for a bus. And when one finally shows up, it's usually full. Three. I can't believe how much this neighborhood has changed. What do you mean? Well, when Joe and I first bought this house, that was almost 20 years ago, of course, there were lots of young couples with children living on this street. I don't see any kids out today. That's because they've all grown up and moved out of their parents' houses. The only young children we see around here these days are the grandchildren when they come to visit. It's too bad. I miss the sounds of kids playing. It's gotten way too quiet around here. Conversation. I need a job. Listen and practice. I'm so broke. I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listed? How about this telephone sales job? You call people and try to sell them magazines? That sounds boring. And anyway, I'm not very good at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I love traveling, and I've never been on a cruise ship. It says here you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working long hours if the pay is good. I think I'll apply for it. Listen to Brad's phone call. What else does the job require? Hello? Hello. This is the Employment Office of Holiday Cruise Lines. May I speak with Brad? Hello, this is Brad. Ah, good. Brad, we got your application for Assistant Entertainment Director. Your skills look good, but I have a question. Do you speak any other languages? No, not really. Oh, that's too bad. We're really looking for someone who can speak at least one other language. I'm sorry, but we'll keep your application and call you if another job comes up. Oh, okay. Well... Thank you for calling me, and I hope to hear from you again. Listening. Job hunting. Listen to people talk about the kind of work they are looking for. Check the job that would be best for each person. 1. Bill. So what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I haven't made up my mind. I love working with people, and I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. I want to get out and see the world. Are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. I'll worry about that later. 2. Shannon What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in law or business. You know, boring stuff like that. That's just not for me. I know I'd like to work overseas, though. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country. But that's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. 3. Ben What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job. Eventually, I'd like to get into acting, maybe even break into movies. But I guess that won't happen for a while. So what are you doing in the meantime? Well, I work out at the gym nearly every day. I need to be really fit. And I'm taking acting lessons as well so that I feel comfortable in front of the crowd. I just had some pictures taken to show to agents in the city. Would you like to see them? Sure. Perspectives Job Profiles Listen to these people answer the question, What kind of work would you like to do? What job does each person talk about? Well, I think I'd make a good journalist because I'm good at writing. 
When I was in college, I worked as a reporter for the school website. I really enjoyed writing different kinds of articles. I know what I don't want to do. A lot of my friends work in the stock market, but I could never be a stockbroker because I can't make decisions quickly. I don't mind working hard, but I'm terrible under pressure. I'm still in school. My parents want me to be a teacher, but I'm not sure yet. I guess I could be a teacher because I'm very creative. I'm also very impatient, so maybe I shouldn't work with kids. Listening. Good or bad? Listen to Louisa and Tim discuss four jobs. Write down the job.